everyone, this is Gail, and as you can see, I have my desk covered <laughs> with canes. And what I thought I would do, these are some of my little canes that I store to use in other things, and I thought we would work on a kaleidoscope cane using scrap canes. Now, if you don't have scrap canes, that's fine. It doesn't matter. I've got some solids, I've got some triangles, I've got triangles in different colors or opposite colors, I have squares, I have black, I have purple, I have green circles, I believe that's green over white, yeah that's green over white, I have black and white stripes as well as the white over the black square. Let me put that over there. So there's just so many different possibilities. And some of these canes are canes that I have had for a long time. And they're things that I will never use, probably. And it's silly for me to hold on to them. Let me see if I can get this one out. Like this one. I believe this was one that I created to make a, um, a center for a, a flower. I believe that's what this was. I believe I, I uh, reduced it and cut it up and put it back together and reduced it some more and cut it up and put it back together. And, and then kept get, this kept getting smaller, so it ended up being a round yellow cane with little tiny black polka dots in it. I don't see any of those, so I must have used them all. But it would probably have been like this. This is a black one that I did the same thing to. This is black with little white polka dots. And it was started out like this. It was white surrounded with black, and I just kept cutting it, putting it together. And it eventually ended up being a little spot like that. So I just decided that I'm going to use up some of these things and just to make room for more canes. And I'm going to push this down a little bit. I'm going to use this just because it's yellow. Um, I have no plans for this cane. I just am going to just go with it and see what happens. But I think I'm going to, let's see, yeah, I knew I covered my ruler up. I think I'm going to start with just a two-inch piece on everything. Let me put this in a short container. I have two different size containers. These are um, for to store bullets in, and I got them at, Harbor Freight and their storage boxes for shells, for bullets or shells. But anyway, so I'm going to start with a two inch piece of yellow and I think all of these colors will eventually go together. But I think because there's black in this, I won't put black next to it yet. So let me find something else that would go well with the yellow. And I'm thinking maybe this one. This is another flower center cane that I was making. I need to just move all this stuff out of the way so I have a little bit of room to roll my canes. Now these again are Cato clay because that's all I used when I was doing clay in Florida. And these canes are probably, oh, I don't know, 12 years old? Easily. Easily 12 years old. So I'm going to roll this one down kind of small. Let me get it the same width. And I'm going to cut it off at 2 inches. And I'm just going to lay it up. Well, no, I'm not even going to do that yet. I'm just going to make pieces. So then I will do a green, and I'm going to do the one with the little stripe in it. Can you see the little stripe? There, a little black and white stripe. 
and I'm not going to make all of these round. You're going to see what I'm going to do in a little while, but I need to pull this out. But you see, somebody asked me the other day if unopened clay could go bad, and it really doesn't go bad. It might get a little hard to condition, but with a little work, you can condition it. And that's about two inches. And I think I want to do some blue. Let me do some of the teal blue. Actually, no, I'm not going to do a flower. I might use that flower. See, that's my problem. I always hold on to things that I might use. Here is a translucent cane that's covered in gold. But let me get one that's a little bit longer. That one's kind of short. And these were... Um, wings for an angel that I made, a little angel bead that I made. And I'm going to leave this in a teardrop shape and just make it a little bit longer. And hopefully I can stretch it into being about two inches long. If not, I will do something else with it and make it two inches long. But this will put a little bit of translucent in there. And it's going to be in a teardrop shape. Let me just press that. And I might take that now and wrap that. I'm just going to take this teardrop and roll it around this yellow. And when I say roll it around, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm rolling it around, even if I flatten this part out a little bit. It's going to go around it just a little bit, just curved around. There you go. See how that looks? So now I need something flat, I believe. And I think I will... Let me roll this black square and see if I can't make it a little flatter, make it a, an oblong maybe. See that's two inches, but now it's an oblong. We're going to put all different shapes into this. And I think, well I don't know yet. Let's see what else I've got. This is just playing, you know, which is, I've told you before, that's what I like to do. I don't know how the pink is going to go with it, but it, I'll wait on the pink. Um, let me do, I've got green. Let me do some of the purple. Purple and yellow look good together. And I think I'm going to try rolling this out a little because it's not two inches long, but I want to try to keep it square. And I may change my mind as I go along. But see how easy this clay, even though it's Kato clay and it's really firm, just how easy it still conditions and reduces. Love this clay. Just wish it was a little bit more available. You can get it at Hobby Lobby in the small packages. But you want to have a point at the center, so I think I'm going to use this as the point and press this up against the yellow. So this is going to be, where you make a triangle when you do a kaleidoscope. So this is going to be the beginning of my triangle. Now, I'm going to lay this black piece. Well, maybe not, because it's too close to being the same. Let me find something else that I can flatten out. Let me do, 
um, what is this? I'm not sure what this is, but you can see it's got some purple and green in it and some yellow. So let me soften it up a little bit. This is this translucent's cracking, so it's going to need to be warmed up just a little bit. And then I'm going to flatten it out with the roller. And even if it cracks, it's, it's going to be okay. Oops. This paper is great, but it can get in your way sometimes. So let me just keep pressing, and with a little look, this clay will all go together. But I'm going to lay this on top of that purple square and just press it in and now here I think I will put one of these little things this is the little swirl see if I can find one that's large enough for you to see it started like this I just squished it in, but it started like this, and I've turned it into this. Can you see how little this is? But I'm going to lay that here in the crevice. Now, it looks like I'm just throwing together a bunch of clay, and in pretty much I am. But that's part of the fun of making a kaleidoscope. Now, here I've got a black and white stripe cane. It's the end of one. And I'm going to first stretch this so that it's two inches long. Whoops. Probably shouldn't have pulled it so hard. But this is going to go, actually I want it to show this way. So this one isn't going to work. I need to get a bigger one, which I just happen to have. I told you I had a lot of canes. Because what I want need to do is to make this line go all the way through your cane. And that's the only way to do it is that way. So let me stretch this out a little bit. Again, this is an old cane. It's been sitting here for years. But I'm going to go ahead and just roll it. Don't try to reduce it too quickly. Whoops. But go on all four sides, just keep turning it, roll, turn it, roll, turn it, and roll. And you can, I don't know if you can tell, but it's getting longer. And next thing you know, it's going to be two inches long. It may be getting right about, about there right now, let me see. I've got about another quarter of an inch to go, but that's all right. Just keep rolling, turn, roll, turn, roll, turn. I hope, I guess you get tired of me saying the same thing over again, but that's kind of what's going on in my head. I go roll, turn, roll, turn. Now let me trim off these ends because the ends did get a little wonky. And I'm going to cut, let me make this two inches because I, I know I shortened it after I cut it. But it should be conditioned pretty good now so I can just squeeze it. And 
and I'm going to cut a slice probably an eighth of an inch thick maybe a little bit more and I'm going to lay my stripe let's see that's going to be square so let me run my actually I'm going to run two stripes I'm going to run this here and put this black on the edge the black here that's on it's on an edge and I'm going to take another slice about the same width or thickness not width and put it up against that one to make a long black and white striped cane and I'm going to bend this one just because don't ask me why I just don't want everything being straight doesn't make a pretty kaleidoscope and I know you're just looking at wonky ends but you can kind of get an idea of where I'm heading with this it's it's curved instead of just being a straight line so now we've got some more to build so let me I've got a place where I can put a small green circle right here right alongside that black and white striped cane and see I'm still maintaining this flat line here because this is going to be a triangle and the other one's coming out this way so now I need something to put on that black and white and I've got to go got to use some of my blues maybe this blue would be better because it's actually a flower petal and I might just cut that and leave it the way it is and put it somewhere <laughs> You don't really know. I mean, every every cane you do is going to be different. Every kaleidoscope you do is going to be different. So I'm going to just put this blue on this side of the black. Well, I need. I think I cut it too short, or else I've stretched this down. Maybe I stretched this down some. I'm going to cut this, lay this right here on that edge. Now that leaves this crease here. So I think I'm ready for some more purple. So let's try. I've got this. This is a triangle that's white on the outside and purple on the inside. And that has white. I might go ahead and use that anyway just because the white will match. And just kind of shove that in there. But you can see by make by just using scraps of your canes, you can do so much. And what else have I got that I can throw in here? I need something. Um, something that would go all the way across here. Maybe I could take... No, I don't want to add more purple. Let's see what I've got here left from my defunct angel. Um... I have some pink, but that's going to be so soft compared to the other clay. I better stick with Kato. Let me see what I've got in my Kato drawer. Got some copper. Uh, 
I don't know how that would look. But you know, it, you don't know till you try. It's totally different. Let me see how wide this is. It's just shy of two inches, so let me do it this way and make it two inches. And then I think I will, let's see. I was going to use gold because I've got gold in some of these other canes, but why not use copper? Let's see, I just want to break up all of these lines and things with something a little bit more solid and linear. And you see that this point doesn't meet over here, so let's just make it meet. Let's just press it in. so that there's no space. Maybe I need to push the blue some too. because We just don't want any space caught up underneath this solid clay. There we go. So that's going to go all the way across. This is going to be so interesting when we cut it. And I hope it's going to be as cute as some of the others I've done. This one is just really just thrown together. I think I'm ready for some more black. So I think I will put black right there. No, I think I'm going to move it over to right there. And now I've got this green that has the black stripe through it. Let me just flatten that out a little bit. And maybe put that over here. So that'll be on the end. And see, you always remember to look at it from this side. Don't worry about what it looks like over here. You're always looking at this side. So I've got this line and this line. So I just need to come up and bring, I need something big to go here. Something round that will go with it. I wonder if the pink would go now. Let's try it. Kind of clashes with the copper, but you know, it's going to be that kind of cane. We'll have to do something with my scrap before long. My colors are getting full. Okay, and I need something in here. And what have I got that can go in there? How about Well, here's a black and gold. It's yeah, it's gold covered in black. I could maybe put some of that in there. But it needs to be a little bit smaller than the one that's there. Now, the only important thing about making a kaleidoscope cane when you're using scraps is that you try to use the same clay, like all of this that I'm using is Kato clay. Because otherwise, when you go to reduce it, you're going to have the Kato, which is really firm, and then you'd have maybe Primo that's not so firm, and then Sculpey that's even less firm. I got smashed and I want it more round to fit in there. And then just one little piece to go in here and I think we'll be done. 
So let me look at this. I've got green and gold and copper and black and pink and green. I've only got that one piece of pink, but I don't know. The only other thing I've got with pink in it is this rose. So let me see about getting that out a little wider and then press maybe making it flat because we don't want a, an actual rose in the cane but when you flatten it out it just becomes a pink design inside of the ivory clay. So you would never know that was a rose. So let's try that. And I think that's going to be our cane. Get rid of all my little pieces. I'm going to move my boxes over just to get them out of the way. Give me some space. There. Now if you look at this, I told you I was making the purple my point. So let's go back and press that and make it, keep it a point. Because as you're working with it, it, it does flatten out a little. And so now what we're going to do, that's the point. So this is our triangle. It's going to be like this. This probably needs to come up a little bit higher, but my, I don't know. I think I'll just leave it the way it is. So I'm going to lay this down on its side. And I'm going to roll this to make it flat. I'm going to roll this to make it flat. And then I'm going to roll this to make it flat. And I'm going to keep doing that until it looks like a triangle. Might take some doing. Actually, that's the top. I probably ought to press this way. Now, if you're using other clay other than the Kato, this will be easier. But you can see I can still press this clay. If you want to get all the air spaces out, make sure that all this gets mashed in. Make sure that your corners have a sharp point or else they won't fit together when you start putting them together. So always go down. I'm thinking this green must have been primo because it's much softer than the rest of them. But just press on all sides. Try to get it all equal, as equal as you can. And now let's cut it and see what we have. Now see, there's one slice. There's the corner. There's the bottom corner. Of course, you can use any of them as corners, but just while I was constructing it, I made the purple side here the, the corner. And in, in order to have something, some kind of reference to do the rest. So let's see what we can do with this. I can reduce it down, just press down in the center all the way around. And then after you get the center moving, then you can start going out and it will start to get longer. Let me see. Oh yeah, this is getting to move a little, so I'm just going to start stretching a little bit.
So we just need it long enough to cut into, into let's see, six pieces. Well, let's start first by cutting it in half. Let's do that first. So let me, I cut that one end off, and it's still in pretty decent shape. Let me cut the other end off so we can tell exactly what we've got. And this is two and a half inches. So I'm going to cut at one and a quarter. Which is right about there. That's not half. Two and a half would be one and a quarter. Maybe I just wasn't looking at it right. So let me do it this way. That's about one and a quarter, a little bit more. But anyway, there we've got a half. Now we need to look at it and see what we want to do with it. Do we want these two purples together? And the green. Do we want to put the green and the pink together? see what that looks like or do we want to put the pink and the purple together now I don't think I would like that because I just don't like these two little dots together it makes them look like eyes so I think I'm going to go back to this way And again, you need to press this back down into a triangle. See, so there's our triangle again. Still looks like eyes, doesn't it? Kind of looks like a moth. What do you think? I don't know. But anyway, you've made it into another triangle, so we need to reduce it again just by pressing. You can press in from the sides and then turn it. Press in from the sides and turn it. And it's up to you how many times you want to reduce it and cut it in half. Sorry about that. I had to take this apart partially, not take it apart, but pull those two pieces that I put together apart because the pink doesn't seem to want to do right. But anyway, I'm still working with it. I think it'll be okay. I'm going to use the pink on the outside and that way you know it won't be so critical. You won't have to worry about the inside being messed up. But anyway, so I have reduced this down now into a triangle and hopefully you can see from through my hands <laughs> I am not the invisible woman, am I? Anyway, I'm just trying to reduce this and the pink is not cooperating. So I probably, I don't know what it's going to look like when we cut it. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this into six pieces see how long this is. It's about three inches, so maybe a half an inch slices. I 
and then you put it together in your cane. Now I think the green is going to end up being in the center. Probably should cut this end off because that end isn't flat. But I'm going to be putting these together with the pink at one tip and the green at the other. Actually, I think this one is backwards. Because the green isn't matching up. Well, I guess that is the way it goes. Okay. Just match up your colors. Keep your green in the center. And just match it up all the way around. And that copper ended up adding a little bit of interest. And put this in here. And there is your kaleidoscope. You can press it together and reduce it. Get that green matched up a little bit better. But what I would do at this point is maybe take an acrylic uh, a piece of acrylic and press in from the sides just and that will help start the reduction because you only have a half an inch or at least I only have a half an inch. Now you can always make yours like I said I I started with my cane only two inches long. You could have done four inches long. I was just trying to work with what I had and it doesn't matter what you start with. Those started out as some pretty crummy looking canes but look how it turned out. Isn't that pretty? And even the copper, you know, I know you can't see it well but it looks like it worked its way in here around the center, around the green and up through here but that's how I do kaleidoscope canes with scrap canes now you can like I said you don't have to use the canes you can start from scratch and make different colors of Skinner blends and then just put them into different shapes do different things with them if you really want to see how to do a great kaleidoscope cane Go to uh, Teresa Pandora Salgado's uh, YouTube channel. She has got some awesome, uh, some awesome videos on doing kaleidoscope canes, and she calls it Pandorafied, and they are. She does some awesome kaleidoscopes. So. Just keep doing that and it will get smaller. It's already getting thicker. It's all it's about three quarters of an inch now. But it, just keep pressing in from the sides. If you have two, which I do, you can do it this way so that you don't lose your shape. And eventually it will get thick enough. that you can grab it and then reduce it like you would a normal cane by twisting and pulling and roll it. You don't want to roll it unless you want to make this round and you can do that. You can make it round if you want. But I will put a link to Teresa's videos in my uh, in the comments down below. So there you go. Let me just slice it Swipe off the ends where we've been working and just see what this looks like. Of course, now the clay is very soft because I've just been messing with it. And there you go. You get a good idea. 
And there's all kinds of things you can do with this. So have fun. That's the main thing. Whatever you do, have fun doing it and enjoy it. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.